Well, you may have seen the video of that conflict outside the Trump rally last week. We got the guy who chronicled it all. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Great to see you. Nice to have you aboard. Thank you very much for tuning into my state of mind. Uh, if you would, for those of you who have been loyal viewers, and can I just say something about this? Um, the, the, uh, the audience for this show seems to have gone like this lately, and I really appreciate that. Uh, and I really appreciate the company's support uh, on that. Uh, there's some changes going on in my career. Beginning today, we moved the radio program to Afternoon Drive on WPRO 3 to 6, where I was for nine years. Of course, I've been at PRO for about 16 years. So. Today, everything was kind of upside down, and we are now recording our show a little bit earlier in the day to accommodate that, and I'm going to have to get used to the chronology of events and remember what goes where, if that makes any sense, because we're recording the television show a little bit earlier in the day, before the afternoon program, but then you see this later on in the evening, and so it's going to take us a little bit of time to get a little rhythm, like a day. Uh, but if I mess anything up today in terms of what you'll see where and how, it's just because I'm old and change is difficult. Uh, Rod Weber uh, is going to be here on the program today. This guy's fascinating. It's every presidential candidate knows him. And uh, he's got a video camera with him all the time, it seems, and then somebody following him with a video camera. Uh, stay tuned. You, you're going to be fascinated by this conversation, I promise. Let's go to the rundown, just kind of check on a couple of things. Speaking of um, politics, this was, this is uh, like a one-step, two-step. Ed O'Neill, the state senator, who is an independent, last week was found, didn't announce, was found to have moved to the GOP because he was on the Tuesday primary Trump delegate list. And uh, he had an answer to that. And a lot of questions came about his move to the Republican Party. And the Republican Party was thinking, hey, we got one more state senator who's a Republican. And then this happened. Wah, 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 wah. He's not running. He put out a press release. If you got the 72 inch screen, you might be actually be able to see it. But what he's saying is, is that listen, I've been a term limit advocate and all of that, but you know what I really do think it's about, and uh, I spoke to him earlier today on the radio. Get it? Uh, Ed uh, when I heard the news, uh, I was uh, very pleased, uh, a little bit confused, because uh, I've introduced that bill um, two sessions in a row. And we could not get anybody from the governor's office to come testify or uh, send a letter of support. No support at all, period. Uh, I know. We had uh, hearings on the bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee. So I'm glad that uh, the governor may be seeing the light. That certainly is encouraging. Okay. Now, th th remember when I said uh, bear with us a little bit about chronology? Bear with the director, too. Because uh, because that's how, for two and a half years, I've said I spoke earlier today on the radio. The truth is, is that Ed was on earlier today on the radio, but that's not what he said because that came from last week, actually two weeks ago, when he was talking about the line item veto. And the point of his commentary there is that he was frustrated over having put in that legislation two years running and nobody spoke. You know, the governor barely blinked, and then all of a sudden we found the governor's commentary in an op-ed piece where she said she would like to see the line item veto, which surprised him, surprised the world. And the governor follow up on that? No. It was like it was like a, a moment in time. It was one burp from the governor, and uh, Ed reportedly finds that frustrating. He'll be here Wednesday, uh, we think, uh, on the broadcast to kind of talk about the, the frustration and, and the move to the Republican Party for 10 minutes. All right. Uh, hey, listen, when Republicans, you know, make news, it's rare. So, I mean, in Rhode Island, anyway. Uh, speaking of the Republicans, you know, Donald Trump is on everybody's brain, but I had to roll this in from the correspondence dinner on Friday night where the president spoke. It's traditional. This is last one, right? Um, watch this video. You know I've got to talk about Trump. There's one area where Donald's experience could be invaluable, and that's closing Guantanamo because Trump knows a thing or two about running waterfront properties into the ground. <laughs> That's a pretty good line, don't you think? But what really grabbed me was, I gotta talk about Trump, as if he's not even a human being. It's as if he's a, well, maybe I'm a human being, sort of, but he's a, a phenomenon. He's a, he's a product, he's a commodity. He's not a candidate for office, nor one that the opposition really respects or thinks about as a, 
opposition candidates. Does it make any sense to you? We've got to talk about Trump. Does it ring that way with you? I don't know. It's the strangest election season I've ever seen. Uh, strange day at Talladega yesterday. What in the name of the Lord was this all about? Uh, that's just one picture of this. Roll some of this, Jess. This is unbelievable. I don't know. There were 50 cars in the race and 40 made it or 45 in the cars in the race and 45 made it. This is a, this is, uh, it's an interesting thing because I, I know a lot of people who love NASCAR. And by the way, by the way, in case you have not scored at home, this is the number one spectator sport in America. You think football and baseball is? No, this is. Now, I don't know if people go for the crashes. It seems to me the aficionados actually go for the actual strategy. Right, Jess? Is that kind of, I mean, they, no? They go for the crashes. Jess comes from Tennessee. Uh, she went for the crashes. Uh, somebody's got to actually care who wins these things, right? So uh, safety first, guys. Look both ways. It's crazy. It's nuts. All right. Uh, let's scoot along. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, our guests, and I think you will, too. Here's headline number one. Headline number one, protests rage outside. Well, this is a scene setter. We're just trying to explain to you, you know, how this whole thing works, meaning when Trump shows up, so do other people, and they're all upset. Uh, or people are there to support him, and uh, they're upset. The people are upset. Uh, headline number two, this is home base here outside the uh, Crown Plaza in Warwick last week, and uh, it was the Monday before the primary, I believe. And then this, after a video came out, this was the result, and here was the video that was the evidence. You can see that this is, we don't have audio on this one, we have audio coming up. But this young man is saying what he's got to say, and what you don't catch in that edit is the, uh, the other young man who just got pushed actually laid a hawker on the, or I don't know if he hit him, but he tried to. And then this kid came back and blah, blah, blah. And so the first guy, this guy with the square on his face for some reason is the, the guy that got arrested first. But after review, the state police took the other guy in and I'm sure it'll be, you know, 500 bucks and don't do that anymore. Uh, Rod, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you too. Are, you are the guy that took this video. That is correct. You have been chronicling this presidential race for since, the- Since July. Wow. This is what you do. You're an artist, filmmaker, are you in the process of, of, of doing a production as I, we speak? Yeah, my, my plan was uh, once the candidates came up uh, northeast and um, and they slowed down in this area to, to focus a little mo more on the editing. So uh, I may I may go out to California. Uh, actually, I mean, if you look at what happened at, uh, at Cosa Mesa, I don't know if I'm saying that right. The California mm. the thing with you know the, right. the Trump guy got punched in the nose right. and bloodied up. California has been known to be a volatile uh, place, so um, and not that that's my focus, but um, you know, I, I think both sides need to be you know, illuminated. And um, I mean, you can even see what happened in Warwick, which I'm glad you pronounced the same way that I do. Um, it's um, the it's the Rhode Island way to do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, you, I mean, you can see there's animosity on both sides, and um, I, I I think you know uh, Trump needs to get a fair shake in that way. But he also needs to be illuminated, and uh, what's going on not just with you know what's coming out of his mouth, uh, but what's coming out of his uh, supporters' mouths and what you know what their actions are. All right, let's let's scene set for me. Um, you've been doing this kind of work for how long? Oh, 10, 15 years. Okay, so this is your trade. Yeah. It's a for-profit business, yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what other kinds of work have you done? Um, well, I mean, sometimes I do commercials, music videos. Uh, I, I hate to say it, occasionally some corporate video work. Uh, okay. you know, doing the things that these people behind the camera do. So you're a professional. Are, are you filming me? That's what you, I guess. Uh, yes, well, yes. It, he asked permission very I, nicely, but I mean, if we're going to film it here, you might as well film it there. Of course, that's the green well, screen. The, well, but, this is, I mean, <laughs> I, I understand this, but yeah. um, I, part of what I'm trying to illustrate through doing some of this is uh, the, the way that the media distorts things. Now, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that you don't. I think you're a guy who's going to play the whole interview, um, but I but I see the way that things. Which are whole interview? With, with me. Oh yeah, what, what, the time we speak yeah. is the time you're on television. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, and, and this and, is a half-hour show. And I believe we have that. 15 minutes of running time. Th that said, I have been on other uh, TV shows. I get where it. They feel like you've been edited. And it's, and it's not so much my protection. It's it's really to show, uh, you know, what's going on in the media. Hmm. Um, Interesting. It's, CNN is one of the big ones. They drive me nuts. Why? Uh, they, they first of all, they change all the headlines. It's all about clickbait. And 
if I say something utterly crazy and go, you know, um, it's okay, that's what we're going to focus on. When Hillary barked like a dog, of course they're going to play that in endless vines. Um, and CNN's supposed to be a news organization. Uh, they're supposed to focus on context. What I have this camera here for is for context. To protect context. Absolutely. Got it. Interesting. I told you it'd be interesting. I'm going to pause here, come back, and the rest of the full conversation will return. Stay with us. <laughs> Last question. Flower boy, come on up. Ah, uh, thank you, man. But in, in honor uh -oh. of Colbert, uh -oh. I, I have something that I want you to hear. This is because you got to spice Weber. it up. This is thank you, buddy. This is Rod Weber, aka Flower Boy. He follows me. And it's, it's always a joy. He believes in peace, as I do. We have a slightly different version of how we get to peace products. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. But uh, he always asks me to say a prayer. I, I brought one after you Can sing your song. The I hope this works out. It, it's gonna. <laughs> the world, the world needs love. Yes, the world needs life. The world needs peace in this time of great strife. But we can't do it with bluff and bluster. We gotta do it with all the love we can muster. Oh, the world, the world, the world needs love. Oh, the world, the world, the world needs love. Oh, we need some love in this world. Cause it seems it's come unfurled. Oh yes, we need some love in this world. Did you bring a ukulele? Did you bring it? I, I, it's in my I, it's uh, in the car. The, the, the car has the guitar. The ukulele got a little damaged. I was uh, having trouble with the tuning pegs. I, I, I made that one up on the spot. And uh, I, you're I, enjoying I, it. Oh well, yeah, no, I have a lot of fun, and it, you know, it, it's okay. It's a little out of tune. It's raggedy, uh, but you know, he has fun with it too. I play it um, for the context. This this whole flower boy thing, as uh, as Jeb Bush referred to you. The flowers are part of what? What, what? what is the routine that you've got going on out there? So uh, I, I started to bring a flower around to all the candidates as a symbolic gesture that should they become president, that there'd be peace over their term. And um, it, it really, it, it's not just because of this, the, the thing with the ukulele. Uh, it was July 4th. Uh, Jeb responded really well to it. Uh, we was at the 4th of July parade in Amherst, New Hampshire. And I said, uh, here you go for peace. Um, but I, but one thing, what can you do for me in return and um, for peace? And he said, I'll pray for it. And so that started off a conversation at all the rallies. I started to go to some of the others in New Hampshire, and I brought uh, 20 Black Eyed Susans that time and said, hey, man, uh, if you gave me one prayer last time, will you give me 20? And, uh, you know, whether he does it or not, and I think he does because uh, he's that sort of guy, um, uh, the, the important thing for me is that it, it gets people in talking about the idea of peace and what we can do for it. Do you have a candidate in this race? Oh, I, I don't speak about that. Otherwise, it makes it impossible to do what I do. Okay. I just uh, wanted to double check that there was no candidate advocacy in no, this no, whole no. thing. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I will tell you, at, at a certain point with Donald Trump, I began to speak out against him. Um, he, he's, he's the one candidate that I feel has gone over the line. Um, so I, I'll tell you, I don't think he's a good candidate. Mm. For well, you're not going to find any arguments here, uh, which is kind of rare when it comes to you know, what I do, there are a lot of folks who, who think this thing is uh, a circus act worth, um, you know, multiple shows. And I, I just can't, um, I'm, I'm very troubled about where America is right now in reaction to him, so we can preach to each other's choir on that, I guess. Uh, what's your major concern? Uh, my major concern is the xenophobia, the misogyny, all the things that we've heard before. It's a broken record. We know how awful he is, and I don't think it needs to be restated. Um, but even beyond that, I think, uh, you know, when he and Ted Cruz talk about carpet bombing the Middle East and uh, the idea of Donald Trump having his, his finger on the trigger or the button, as it were, that, that concerns me greatly. So, you know, I didn't, Jess, I didn't prepare you for this, but c can you roll that uh, Trump rally incident uh, uh, video that we had uh, earlier on? I just want to run this one more time for context so that we can talk about this event uh, a little bit. You know, Trump decided last minute to come in uh, to work, and, and this was outside, out there on Route 5, I believe, because they wouldn't let anybody out on the property who, who couldn't get into the tent. These kids were kind of uh, were, were Trump advocates, and they were boisterous. This young man decided that he was going to, you know, lay a louis on the other kid. And they, I, think, I think the video shows the truth. It was not that big a deal. But you were, you, you do something interesting. You were 
chronicling it with your small camera, but someone was following you, correct? Is this kind of a thing you've got going on, like a, a double back camera situation? Um, in, in, in general, in New Hampshire, that, that was the way we were doing it. Uh, this one, since it was last minute, that was I actually just happened to have a GoPro in my other hand. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So... <laughs> Uh, well, uh, it, how does that work? One on the head, one on the well, leg. Well, basically, or? well, you don't see it in, in this video because actually, when we were outside the tent, uh, and again, Donald Trump put this together last minute. It wasn't in the hotel itself; it was in a tent. Uh, the police said there was a 700 to 900 capacity, and uh, when the protesters did show up, which was roughly at the point they said that the rest of the people who were waiting in line couldn't get in line, things became extremely volatile, and um, immediately, um, I, I, st I stood in the middle, just simply trying to document. I just, either side and that's why I had the two cameras and um, right off the bat one of the guys on the Trump side said you don't belong here and um, grabbed the camera started tossing it then threw it out into the, right. into the audience like a football right where can people see because oh, I've seen the long video where, where can they see the long video it's the, online right yeah it's uh, youtube.com slash Rod Weber okay all right so make a note of that if you want to see the whole thing in context it was disturbing to me to see a, a middle-aged guy grab your camera and toss it why do you think that happened I think uh, emotions are running very high, and uh, people stand in line for you know many hours. It was a hot day that day. Um, I think that certainly contributes it, to it. You see what goes on in California and how things are more volatile there. Orlando, when I was down there, there's something about the heat and the long lines, uh, and then you don't get in. And so, right. and a lot of these people, they they get very emotional when and they're they're let down. They go through the stages of grief grief very rapidly. And then these socialists show up and they start yelling, Bernie, Bernie's a pervert. That's one, that's one of their favorite ones. And then a lot of the people that were, you know, doxing this other guy, they like to, to equate the, the others to, uh, to sexual deviants and predators. And it, it seems as though the, the, the conversation is utterly uncivilized. And uh, one of the things that I do, uh, you can kind of see in that video there, I, I bring a bullhorn, which I, uh, when things get chaotic, is to try to calm people down and then give the Trump supporters a chance to say something and then the protesters a chance. And so, so there's are, more of a dialogue. Are you successfully viewed as a moderator or do people, because they're in a frenzy themselves, feel you're an, an extra antagonist? Um, I, I have heard both. Uh, in, in, the, in the case of this one in, in Warwick, uh, the vast majority of people, I was thanked by Trump people, I was thanked by protesters, and yeah, there was. There was one older guy that thought I was more of a provocateur, uh -huh. and I, well, you, you, an entertainer. Um, I'm really interested in, in your in your take on the psychology of all these folks. We'll talk more about that. Uh, Roger agreed to come on the radio tomorrow on WPRO to have a little bit more comfortable and easy conversation about this. When we come back, you'll see a couple more pieces of video. It's interesting. Stay with us. Hey, Rod. Hey, how you doing? Good. Will you accept a flower for world peace? A absolutely. Okay, thank you, sir. A and and the best way to peace is peace through strength. All Rock right. and roll. Take care. Thank All right, you, you too. Thank you, Rod. Bye-bye. All right, so everyone's got their little take. I'm fascinated that you've been able to develop a relationship with each of these candidates. It's a really, really cool thing. Uh, how many man hours? Give me a, a, a brief uh, oh, guesstimate. I haven't done that breakdown. Um, All right, I'd figure it out for the radio tomorrow because I want to hustle through here. It, I want to half the year, 150 days I put in. Wow. I I, I want to show this video. This is uh, Rod uh, having a little bit of a challenge. Was this a Trump event? Just ask a question. You're fine. Uh, fine. Uh, well, it was a multi-candidate event. Bernie Sanders all the way to the left and Trump all the way to the right and everyone in between. Uh, Chris Christie. Into Sure. Lindsey Graham, yeah. yeah. Let's watch this for a second. So you're, let's listen in for a minute. And now, now the mic doesn't exist, right? Get out. Right? We're, we're so where's the mic? Know, please. Where's the mic, dude? Please leave. You're making a commotion. Um, no, you're creating a commotion by lying. I had a spot up here. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Don't touch me. Hands off, buddy. Hands off. Hey, look. Don't touch me. Stop touching me. So I'm self-funding my Stop touching me. Don't talk to me. Are you part of the staff here? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? You're going to see my name in your face. Oh, I'm going to see my name? Okay. So when you compromise, you get what you want. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I was told the mic was down here, okay? He doesn't have a mic. The mic. The mic. I was attacking the Rochester rally. Donald. Hey, hands off. There's... All right, so you're... You're antagonized. Are you antagonistic? Uh, I don't think so. I think the important thing that, is, that brings a lot of confusion to people here is that it was a multi-candidate event. I pr applied for press. 
I had it in writing from the staff there that Trump had no authority there. They were not the security detail. They were only there to guard Trump himself. So when these guys tell me to move out of my seat and I'm not able to ask my question. Uh, well, how did it start and why? Uh, well, I, uh, I had been roughed up at his previous rally in Rochester, New Hampshire uh, for asking a question. Uh, it was scripture. Uh, basically, this was back before uh, there was violence at these events. And it was kind of uh, when he was seen as the clown and there was lots of random things were being shouted out and said, hey, let me do a Bible verse. And he said, sure. So it was 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. It is noble to seek the office of overseer, but he who does should be above reproach, sober-minded, not quarrelsome. That's not Donald. Uh, married only once and not a lover of money. And I was viciously booed by the audience. And then there was a, a number of other people that kind of, you know, would put anti-Trump questions out there. And he decided to wrap it up. And so within a couple minutes, they were pushing and giving me kidney punches on the way out. That was in Rochester. That was in Rochester. So then you followed up. So, I, yeah, I followed up and uh, came out to this event, which was a multi-candidate thing. So now the security's got, uh, you know. They've got an eye for me. That's Edward Deck. Uh, well, uh, he's one of the uh, Trump known people. He's, uh, he was involved at Trump Towers and beating up the, the Mexican guys that come out in the KKK outfits. All right, that would be allegedly, right? I, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to throw that no, in. There's video. I, there's well, I haven't seen it, so I'm just saying that for, okay, for my own um, protection uh, and the show's protection. But sure. I, I get it. Um, what's the moral of that story, do you think? Uh, the moral of the story is that um, Donald Trump has, uh, he's an unelected official who has superseded his authority by using the Secret Service and local police forces as his personal goon squad. Um, you know, the, the Fourth Amendment protects us from illegal search and seizure. Uh, you know, there's, and there's got to be just cause. I was arrested for this, and all I was trying to do was speak my First Amendment right to ask a question about the previous event. The, uh, the Secret Service does its own thing when they're, when, they're when, when, when they're called in. I think Trump has very little say over what they do. Uh, theoretically, um, but in practice, that's not how it plays out. Uh, you go to the, the Clinton rallies, and she's somewhere in between uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, it's like a peace and love fest, like you're going yeah. to a folk fest. And then the Kasichs are pretty, you know, uh, I've been to a town meeting for Kasich. You laid back, too. They look like this, and Rod had some fun there. Yeah. What is your vision for the exploration of space? Well, I mean, it's all about what David Bowie sang about. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. Help me. Take your protein pill. Oh, no, no, not that. Here we go. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. That's good, huh? How about that? Far above the world. You invited I only have a few seconds left. Uh, everybody can see your stuff where? RodWeber.com uh, or YouTube slash RodWeber. All right. Um, you'll come on tomorrow on the radio and talk uh, more comfortably and lengthily about what you're trying to accomplish here. But in 10 seconds, what are you trying to accomplish here? Um, world peace. I, I want to bring people together, not just uh, from country to country, but man to man. Uh, we need to be more civil. Uh, what Trump is doing, uh, that's, that's a big problem. And we need to be nice to each other. We need to love each other. We're all one. We're all one. All right. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. And we'll see you on the radio tomorrow. Final word when we come back. Stay with us, please. Common Cause Rhode Island will be my guest tomorrow night. I guess there were a lot of peculiarities and problems at the primary voting precincts. you got to get a little smarter about this stuff, you know, and Common Cause will help you with that. I'll see you on the radio tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Have a great night.